I am so excited for this video. Today we are listening to Linda Ronstadt. Now, I'm sure it will come as no surprise to many of you, I am a huge fan and I genuinely believe she is one of the greatest vocalists of all time. Because I've seen so many of her videos, I think it would be difficult to do a proper reaction. So instead, I have queued up five clips to share with you guys that I think demonstrate and just give a little inkling into her greatness and why I just think she is so spectacular. So here we go. Now, I can't remember if I put these in chronological order, but we are starting in the 60s when she was singing with the Stone Ponies. This is Different Drum. That alone, like, mind you, this was in the 60s, like, this, I think this is just, this looks kind of like a jazz club or just like a smaller venue, so not gonna have a lot of mixing and tuning, and her intonation is so good. You'll notice when she sings, she does that little sort of apple bite posture, so she's got the cheeks up, nice wide palate, but really neutral jaw. I'm just gonna play that again real quick. Boy, do you cry and moan and say it will work out? But honey child, I've got my doubts. You can't see the forest for the trees. The other thing, you know, you hear this a lot in classical singing, chiaroscuro, when you're trying to balance the light and the dark. I think she does such a beautiful job engaging chest resonance, like keeping a really nice, full, boomy sound but she's really good at engaging nasal resonance as well. It carries, it has just a tiny bit of twang in her sound that just gives this beautiful brightness. And this is only at the beginning of her career. Like, <laughs> that is what is so exciting. Let's just listen a little bit more. The fact, I mean, also <laughs> the professionalism. I don't even know how old she is at this at this particular performance, but she is just like taking the reins. She is so in control. She's not letting anything affect her vocal production. And it's consistent from the top of her range to the bottom. It's just so smooth. <sighs> you know, I'm realizing this might've been a mistake because I really want to watch all of these all the way through, but we're not doing that. So next up, we are hitting, ah, uh, you're no good. So obviously the 70s, it, it, so many hits, so many hits. You could pick any of them. I chose this one just because I really like this performance, but um, that's not to say it's better than the rest because you know, like everything she did was just so good. So here we go. Already, already, she's done so much. So when you're that low, to make sure you have really good vocal production, sometimes people will whisper because if you really put a lot of pressure on your chords and you really try and fully adduct, you are you run the risk, depending on where you are in your range, if it's really at the bottom of your range, you run the risk of getting like cracks or like, ooh, you know, like it's hard to sustain when you're at the bottom of your range. So all she did was she just let off the pressure just a little bit. Da, da, da. It's a little bit more whispery and then she brings back the power like almost instantly.
Like, okay, you can actually see her tongue. It's nice and high. The root of her tongue is nice and high in the back. Um, but she's she's not afraid to like see what her voice can do. Like, she's not afraid to be gruff with it, but she does it still in a very healthy way. And then, of course, they all jam out. So I would say stylistically, even though these two songs are very different, they're kind of within the same range. Next up, <laughs> this is her singing Skylark. So I think for many, we would consider this kind of a jazz standard. And I just, what she does vocally is so different than than what she did before. And I think that's something that I've always admired about Linda Ronstadt is that she was always pushing the envelope. Like she never rests on her laurels, constantly like striving for more, trying new things and really experimenting with her voice and seeing what it can do. So again, it still sounds like her. Like she has such a beautiful, distinguishable, recognizable tone, but now she really let off the gas. She's embracing a very head dominant mix so that it sounds warm, sultry. It's got a little bit of that vintage tone to it as well. Where my heart can go a journey Over the shadows and the rain To a blossom-covered lane And in your lonely blood <sighs> I'm so sorry, I keep, like, pausing. It's so good. Listen to, to that top note because it does sound very different than the high notes we heard previously. And she's just, she's a master artist when it comes to like style. Hold on, that whole phrase, so many colors. I'm gonna like pause throughout just to kind of point things out. Music in the night. Really head dominant mix. Wonderful music. Faint as Faint. It's just, that is a beautiful like vintage sound. I feel like, especially in the 40s and 50s, there was a lot of like sliding, but it was so sultry. <laughs> Now there, when she sang sad, full belty mix, but it just has this, hmm, I gotta find a good descriptive word. Well, it's, it's just very boomy and very present. Um, let me hear that again. Almost like a little lilty. Hear the contrast between like the last phrase and that. Even though she didn't demonstrate a lot of agility in her her music, at least the, the popular songs, she has it. Like, just, she uses it so tactfully. 
Serenading a skylight, I don't know if you can find these things. So much for that. But my heart is riding on your wings. So if you see them anywhere. Won't you lead me there? So much control, you guys. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, we're going to keep going. I don't even know how much time we have. <laughs> okay, so next up, something... Well, I don't know. Maybe a lot of you guys, if you're like big fans, you've probably seen this before. But I was shocked to... Re remember and find out. So it wasn't until I saw the, uh, she did a documentary or there was a documentary on her. Maybe it was a few years back. I can't remember when, but I had no idea that she was the one who sang Mabel in this movie version of Pirates of Penzance. And I remember seeing this as a kid, but I, I never put two and two together. So if you're not familiar with Pirates of Penzance, it's considered, you know, operetta and definitely more classical in style. Okay, so right there, you can definitely hear that contemporary style that she's so famous for, but here we go. Okay, so, oh man, I love this woman. Can we just, uh, okay, obviously she is a rock star in contemporary singing at this time, but she was like, you know what, no, I want to try something different. And I remember watching an interview and her saying like, oh, it, you know, it took a lot of practice, it took a lot of work, but like she put in the time, she wanted to do this. And on top of that, we have to also acknowledge her acting chops in this because it is like a production, it's a movie. And so I hadn't seen that, you know, because she was always just like, well, I, I know. <laughs> No, I wasn't alive, but in videos, you see her in performance and in concerts and whatnot. And so like getting to see this side of her, I just think it's just so cool. Now, from a technical perspective, this role requires a lot of agility. You heard those runs, but it also requires a very youthful sound. And her voice, I would characterize as very rich, very present, very boomy. And so she really had to undergo a lot of changes vocally in order to do this, but this just shows you all the things the human voice can do, and I love that she wasn't afraid to do that. Um, the last clip I have is, well, I'm just gonna play it. Okay, so 
palio, palio, un palio, palio. Yo quiero montaña en toro para que me mire mi amor. Like, how cool is this? This is another thing I just respect so greatly about her because as an artist, she decided, you know what, I want to do something to honor my heritage. And so she put out this incredible album. Um, vocally, I want to go back to kind of the beginning of this because those sustained notes, they don't change in color for even a millisecond. Like, her placement is so spot on. It is so perfect and it is so powerful and her vibrato is just it's like butter Valiente tan con sus cantos la evocación. Every one of those the same notes. Caribe su pesejo que huele a surco y a tradición. Remedio de la faena más alirada de mi nación. Now coming up, I want you to listen for that sort of whimpery sound she incorporates. It's very cool. Bonito ser Caribe. Like she just wasn't afraid to take her her chords to the extreme and it, she's so smart though like she really just knows I think I honestly think she could have been an incredible voice teacher if that was like a path she wanted, knowing how well she can execute so many styles, so many genres, and do it all so healthfully. I just... <sighs> I will put the links to all of these videos in the description for those of you who want to hear more, but that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching with me, and hopefully I will see you next time.